uh, we are presenting the next live case from uh, Madras Medical Mission. It's a five-year-old girl. She was born preterm with a birth weight of 1.6 kg. Uh, she has history of recurrent respiratory infections. Her growth and development are currently normal. Uh, she was diagnosed in the neonatal period itself to have a right aortic arch, aberrant left subclavian artery, left-sided PDA, and the PDA was closed with a 10-12 ADO1 device in 2019 when she was two years old at another center. She also has a perimembranous VSD which was not addressed in the previous cath. On examination, she is a playful child with normal growth and development weighing 22 kg. Uh, hemodynamically stable and severe uh, examination has cardiomegaly, normal S1, wide split S2 and a uh, grade 4 pan systolic murmur in the left sternal border. It's an x-ray which shows uh, uh, cytosolitis levocardia with a uh, cardiothoracic ratio of 60%, dilated MPA segment, right aortic arch and pulmonary plethora. Uh, her ECG was showing sinus rhythm with a PR interval of 120 milliseconds, normal uh, QRS axis of plus 45 and biventricular hypertrophy. This is her echo, uh, the subcostal view which shows a perimembranous VSD. Uh, now this is the epical four chamber view, uh, sorry epical five chamber view in which we can see uh, the perimembranous VSD shunting left to right can you can you hear us yes we can hear you now okay yes. because can you show the live echo from dr srija yeah now srija go ahead pick tape shiva you said that your patient has no strider no airway issues yes like yes that. yes Are you able to see the echo, uh, uh, Ma Joseph? Yeah, we can see well. Okay, so Srija, Srija, go ahead. Describe. So we can see the VSD in a short axis view. The VSD is closely bene located beneath the RCC NCC commissure. I'll put color. Sorry, there is some interference with the machine. What is the maximum size, Rija? Measure it. It's around 8 millimeter. 8. 7 to 8, yeah. Okay. And in the long axis. Prabhu, all over the place. So that's the VSC which is located bank beneath the aortic valve. Uh, angiogram? There is no cusp relapse. This is the color flows across the VSD. There is no aortic margin, Srija. Yeah, there is no aortic margin. It's roofed by the aortic valve. So this is a perimembranous VSD without any significant aortic margin. It's almost hugging the aortic valve. Yes. There is a trickle of aortic regurgitation pre-existing. Is there aortic regurgitation? Trivial. Uh, can you get it focused nicely, Srija? That uh, it reduce is a the gains. There is some noise there. Reduce the color gains. Probably some electrical. Sure, that is slight elongation of the right coronary cusp, I think, because mm -hmm. the AR is make it make it make 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 it, it, ma make, make right it magged, Srija. Mag it. So in many centers, Shiva. Yep. This would not be attempted uh, because of. No support underneath the right coronary cusp, no yep. rim. Yep. Um, what are your views on that? Yeah, I agree. I agree, Shaq. I agree, Shaq. We lost the audience. Uh, there yes, is sir. no aortic regurgitation on echo. Zero regurgitation. Yeah. However, no rim between the defect and Mag the, put it on the aortic cusp. Just so put that it on the developing aortic regurgitation. Zoom that. Shiva, whilst you're thinking, I'm going to ask that. What is, what is your question? Yeah, it's working. Hey, Shiva, I, I would do two things here. So I, I still don't think you can decide based on echo if there is any area below the aortic valve. So I'll do LV and G with cranial, and then I'll do aerogram to make okay. sure there's Okay, so just slightly pull out the, the, the slightly pull out the T probe. Then you can make T probe out, little bit out. 
steep of little bit. You're not committing yourself yet on the TOE, okay? Okay. Now uh, I'm uh, I'm going to do an angiogram because right. this is a right arch with the aberrant left subclavian. Ready? Ready, sir. Shoot. So you can appreciate that from That's the comorals diverticulum there was a PDA. That PDA was closed, yes. but this patient is not having any vascular obstruction, which indicates right. clearly. Right. Yep. Uh, hold on, I'm out. Show that angio. Similar case Show that where the, there is the start of prolapse of the right aortic cut, but no AR, and we put on devices which are touching the aortic valve, and we're following these uh, patients, and so far they are doing well uh, with the MFO device, and also with the ADU tool. And if they develop aortic regurgitation a few years later, then who uh, wants come to elevo cranial? Anybody? Elevo, yeah. 45? Enough. Okay. Repeat another angiogram now in yeah. the aortic root. Make it magnified. Shiva. Yep. I'm just going to pick on Alan Nugent, who's asleep. Uh, 15 at 15. One more mag. Uh, I work in the US, so um, yep. this would not be done in the US. I think the difficult Ready? decision is whether you deal with that vascular ring surgically at the same time with the device already in there. Ready? Uh, and is it just the fact that it's very membranous VSE or is it the fact that here you've got no rim? Keep running it. So in the US we're restricted with perimembranous VSEs and I personally just attempt the ones that have a wind sock. But yes, even if I was an aggressive person, the lack of a rim would lead me to send it to surgery. Shiva, can you comment on this uh, aortogram? I, I, okay, because, uh, show, show the diatogram. There is a, first some comments about that. There, is, a, there is a right coronary cusp which is sagging into that VSD. You can see that I have actually positioned my catheter pigtail inside the right coronary cusp. It is at a much lower level than the other two cusps. But there is no regurgitation. That's exactly what uh, Joseph was uh, commenting, in the sense that uh, there is no aortic regurgitation. However, the right or not coronary cusp is tend to prolapse Ready? Ready? through the defect. So that's an additional, uh, well, particular that is uh, at risk of uh, developing aortic regurgitation. What do you think? Shiva. Yep. I'm just, I'm just covering different continents, so I'm going to ask Mansoor came to, uh, came to, come to uh, the pictures on this VSE. Yeah, keep... Uh, uh, just we have, uh, Shiva, we have a right arch, BDA, and uh, this is a, a complete form of vascular ring. I Maybe asymptomatic at this stage, so what do you think? I, I was just, we were briefly discussing it a short while ago. This patient, in spite of having a right aortic arch with the comorals diverticulum and a PDA, the previous operator who saw this child a two year put in a large 1210 device, and this patient does not have any symptoms of airway obstruction at all. So this clearly states that the space orientation of the trachea and esophagus in a vascular space is very variable from patient to patient and we cannot blindly take a decision that uh, the everybody needs a vascular ring uh, corrective surgery. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but the question is a vascular ring now. It's a vascular ring. And he may be asymptomatic at this stage or may be symptomatic later in adult life. Uh, I, I, Especially I, questions about, uh, you know, dyspagia as the child grows older because the, the restricted area is not going to grow and it's the left aberrant subclavian is going to be retroesophageal. So you may not have symptoms now and some patients develop symptoms much later in life. Okay. So I think if you look at everything together, probably it's not a bad idea to consider surgery. Uh, okay, now let, let us see the pressures also. You see the pulmonary artery pressure is still remaining high the the pulmonary artery pressures were near systemic when the original uh, intervention was done many many years ago uh, i think it was close to around four years ago that the 
in some other hospital this PDA device was done and they had recorded systemic PA pressures. But now, now today uh, the, pul the pu pulmonary artery pressure is half systemic. Mario, irrespective of the vascular ring, open the other pressure line. Pictures you've seen of the VSD, both angio and TOE, what would you do? Well, I would be very concerned in this case. Uh, if for some reason I would attempt to, to put a device in, I would be very careful. And uh, if I can achieve a, let's say, perfect result immediately, I could accept to put the device in. But uh, if show just me the previous a, a small or tiny regurgitation may occur, now I get would to the same uh, picture. avoid to put the device uh, and in. And then next question is, what device would you be thinking of using if you were closing this? The right one. Oh God. Okay. I hope probably, I probably I will <laughs> use uh, an MF4 device, my favorite device Come in to AP. almost 90% uh, of the cases will be MF4 device. Uh, for, except for uh, perimembranous BSDs with uh, aneurysm, with tunnel-like, okay. where uh, an ADO1 device or some, sometimes ADO2 device can be used successfully, but for the most cases, I will use MF4 device. So, Shiva, yep. tell us what you're thinking now in terms of number one is closing the VSE, number two, how, and number three, which device? I agree with the concerns that it is very close to the aortic valve, and hence the aortic valve needs to be respected. When the device is in position, if there is a compromise of the aortic valve, we probably should not release the device. About the vascular ring, I am pretty convinced that this child, as a, a young infant, the child got such a large device, 12, 10, and the child has absolutely no airway symptoms. So I feel that airway as well as esophageal con like constriction is very remote in this patient. Technically, the relief of right aortic arch with aberrant left subclavian artery is division of the ligamentum arteriosum. The ligamentum arteriosum is now occupied by a large device. It's not going to be easy for the surgeon to pluck out that device so easily. Uh, he, he may have to uh, spend a lot of time uh, through the midline sternotomy when he is attempting a VSD closure to, uh, to arrive, like uh, to get a vascular control over the comorals diverticulum that is lying posterior to the esophagus. While it is very easy to divide a ligament through a left thoracotomy in the virgin state, once you have a device across the ligament or the ductus, and that has been left behind for the last five and a half, four, four and a half years, it's not going to be easier. So, so vascular ring, it's not symptomatic, it's out, so we are not bothered. Now, so just on that, just on that particular point, I'm not walking all the way back to the back, Mansoor is too far away, but he, jokingly said, divide the device uh, because it will be covered throughout and both ends. And that should be easier to do than dividing the ligamentum. Can you see that I'm now crossing the ventricular septal defect, pressure guided. I hope you are seeing the pressures as well as uh, I, I basically, I got my catheter from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle Fluoro store and show that again. Fluoro store. Show that again. You see that now this is pulmonary artery. I am coming down. I came into the right ventricle. And then now I have got the catheter into the left ventricle. So I am going to advance my guide wire into the iota if it goes, yeah. So get me uh, sa seven uh, French malin sheet, or get a six French malin sheet. Cook malin sheet six French. So basically, the reason why I am not taking an arteriovenous loop, and I am trying to take a direct uh, entry from the RV into the LV, is that. I am not dragging the prolapsed leaflet. 
I am actually going from the RV into the LV. I am avoiding a worsening of the prolapse. Now I am going to advance my mullein sheath all the way into the left ventricle. And after I get it into the left ventricle, then let me decide about what is the next step. I am mentally thinking about using a multifunction occluder again. I have an option Shiva. of... Yep. Shiva, uh, I was going to say think out loud, but you're thinking out loud anyway. But what, uh, have you got any idea of the, you've got the MFO, but what size are you thinking of and how do you make that decision? Shaq, this is a, uh, uh, a orifice of around 8 millimeters. Uh, so, I, if I am going to use a mullein sheath, uh, sorry, I am going to use a multifunction occluder, it needs to be 1210. A 1210 will have a 16 millimeter disc on the LV side. The other option will be... Shiva, I 12, Shiva, 12, 10 is the, well, the 8 millimeter is the maximum size. What to use 12 and not 10, for example? Uh, it'll be smaller, no? Uh, it's a 10 millimeter, it's a 8 millimeter hole. We need to be at least 2 millimeter larger than the... That's exactly, 8 uh, plus 2 means 10. Uh, yeah, but 10 plus 2 is 12. Correct. And if you add additional 2, it means 14. <laughs> it's just walking in the easily. Is that, uh, there, is no, there is no aortic rim at all. That, uh, uh, well, and in, uh, well, even, even if you use uh, uh, an MFO, which is very flexible, I 100% in favor of that. Still, the left disc is a bit larger, so having no aortic rim at all, I mean, uh, the chance of it interfering with the, the leaflet is uh, remarkable, in my opinion. But, well, probably you have to, to try and see what's going Any, on. Anybody in the audience use the PFM coil in this sort of anatomy? There are people using... Uh, Peter. I would, I would use a PFM coil in this... Uh, some rim to the aortic valve. So the, the device will slip. Show, show me the show the aortic valve now, Srija. Show the echo big. Echo live. Yeah. Srija, now show the aortic regurgitation. If it is present, what is the flow? There is a tri trivial regurgitation. Okay. Let me but see. But the catheter is across. But the catheter is across, yep. Uh, okay, now get me one angiogram now. Ready? Shoot. Okay, Mario, I see, I, I, it, it's a, it's a 8 millimeter orifice. The pulmonary artery pressure is 56 millimeters of mercury and the RV pressure is 56, while the aortic pressure is 105. The, the pulmonary, the RV pressure is more than 50 percent of LV pressure. I feel that to, un to oversize just by 2 millimeter may invite embolization of the device. We will try to put in a 1210. Right. You, you, may be, you may be right. Well, if I uh, add an additional call, very, very brief call. 1210 MFO. Sometimes can when I, I try to close the perimenus, can come out. VSD, can assist the very, AR very better. small Most aortic different. rim, seems to be very worrisome. However, when putting a device in, it's okay. Now show the, I mean, show the echo big. Too pessimistic, the appearance of the echo big, echo, color, echo air. You have to be very careful anyway. There is some amount of aortic regurgitation that is seen now. That's of concern. So, uh, Sh 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 Shiva. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, Tom, put your hand up and then the microphone next to you. So you just show it on a short axis now? Yeah. Short axis LV. Okay. So, what would you do in this situation, Tom? Advise everybody. Well, 
I, I probably use a PSM device, believe it or not, in this particular one. And um, is this a 12 ton? I, I see what it looked like. I, I guess I would see what it looked like. I think it's going to be underneath the aortic valve. I think it's going to look better than what we think it's going to look, and I think it's going to be fine. I don't know about this device. I'm not really okay. familiar with it. All right, Shiva, we've got about five minutes. Uh, yeah. I don't want you to speed up. I just want you to do it without talking. No, don't tell him. Don't tell him to speed up, please. But no talk. <laughs> but I'm trying to stop him talking. <laughs> so it's going to be a silent movie. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, you can talk, but tell us what you're doing rather than anything else. I am now advancing a 1210 MFO device. I have taken out the pigtail in order to avoid uh, an interference of the aortic valve. So now I am coming with pressure guidance. Show it on short axis, Srija. Short axis, 30 degree. Uh, ready for a small angiogram? Now don't uh, enable the injection. I am releasing the device on Cine. Okay, it popped out. It is looking larger than uh, what possibly uh, can be uh, like a 12 ton is popping out, Mario. So use the 10 8, yeah, Mario. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I wonder how many uh, show that show that angiogram you apply to the to the system. I and was I was coming very it's rather difficult to say the device lifts through because it's too small or uh, because you pull too strongly. I uh, mean, I, 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 or, a, or an angle point. as well, or an angle as well. Mario, Mario, I did not use this force. Shiva, this was primarily because of sheath angulation. You see? Yep. The moment you deploy the disc. Angulated so strongly. Yeah. So I, I think this device is actually big, if you ask me, because it look it feels going to obstruct the aortic valve. Come to AP view, but uh, but uh, Mario, uh, I, but I, is, is Shiva, I, I, th I think that uh, is if you cannot implant this device, I would not attempt to use a larger device. It's definitely too big. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so Zahid, did you uh, no, uh, 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 do you agree that this patient's PA pressure? is, uh, is uh, more than 50% systemic. That means this VSD is actually little bit more larger than possibly eight that we are measuring. Uh, I, in fact, I did not oh, use yeah. oh, force at all. I did not use force. But, uh, no, no, I think the angulation of the sheath, you didn't use the force. Yeah. The sheath, the moment it popped out of the VSD, right. you know, that I think had a strong angle. Have you seen it? Yeah. Shiva, have you seen yep. it? Yeah. I've just wait, popped wait, it wait, wait a second. I've yeah. just spotted 10. He, I'm going to ask him to give a view. 10. Close or not to close, and if so, what to do? Uh, I think we should close. But the problem is the angulation between the septum and the device. Yeah. And for uh, avoiding the angulation, sharp angulation, I see if I should open the left side disc and the waist. And between the right side disc and the waist, there are the connection. And the device become more flexible and just uh, the position is parallel with the setup. Yes. Dean, so another question to you. Would you and use an antegrade venous approach in this case or something different? Dilated. I think as uh, antegrade is okay, but just uh, change the position of the device a little bit and the size of the device. I think the, uh, this size is okay. No, no, no need to increase the size. Thank you. There you are. Shiva, that's Shiva, your... Yeah, we got one minute. One minute. Wait so for you. So what I'm uh, what I'm some, going uh, to what I'm going to do is if you look at the previous deployment, I had uh, uh, tried to form the uh, the the uh, distal LV disc.
to come and occlude the LV orifice. Now I probably will uh, go in a... Rush, we've, give, we've given you five minutes. I've negotiated another five minutes. Okay, very good. So don't rush. Keep going. Okay. And do another MDSP. Yeah. I'll listen to it. Okay, see, now uh, what I have done is exactly the same thing. I, re I again crossed anti-grade and I uh, got the uh, sheath across. It's exactly the same thing what I did. Pressure guided crossing over from the RV into the LV with the catheter. I am taking the same device now. Can you, can you flush it, sister? Yeah, thank you. So show me the previous deployment, uh, the previous, the before this. You see that now I have actually created like a ball of the left ventricle. I might uh, deploy a little bit more. Well, Tin, what is your idea? Like now this is the position at which I came out. Should I? Yep. So Tin was making that point about deploying more of the left ventricle disc on the middle okay. in order to stop that ball forming. Is that correct? Yeah. You can deploy more, Shiva. Yeah, yeah, going back. Uh, and, and okay, okay. angiogram can again. Angio? Angio? Can you enlarge the floral, please? It's protruding a lot into okay. the left ventricular outflow tract, but anyhow, I will release it and then yeah, I will see. Make the floral large, please. So, make the now you can pull large. it in a little bit. Actually, okay. Okay. okay, show the previous picture. Now you just receive, it's a parallel already, it's the uh, alignment already. Just uh, retrieve a little bit the waist and deploy the right side already. Oh. Okay, now so much in the left ventricle. it looks like that, but let, saying, us, uh, but let us see one and... Okay, have a look. Can we see the echo pictures as well? The echo also we will show. Now, make an angiogram now, then we will show, see the echo. That's quite a lot in the uh, subaortic region. Yep, yep. So, so Srija, now uh, get, get the echo bigger. There's, a, there's some noise that is coming mm. out, an electrical noise that is coming out. Uh, Srija, how can you get rid of that? Okay, now can you rotate and show the LVOT when it is fully open? You are showing, ah, okay. Shiva, okay. the device is closing the defect, but it is constantly rubbing on the prolapse of elongated right coronary cusp. That's yeah. That's a worry for the future. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now uh, let me, uh, Srija, get it, get it in short axis view. See the three leaflets of the aortic valve and magnify it. There is a zoom button on the panel right side. Is there a concern? I, I, I have two questions. One is, is there concern long term about erosion with the contact with the aortic valve leaflet? And the second thing I noticed was your, your uh, uh, EKG. You, ha you ended up with a, some type of tachycardia with no rate variability. And I wonder if there's been some irritation of the conduction system and if that progresses or there's any concern for that. The conduction system was fine. Actually, the, the ECG is stable. The, there is no, uh, the pre-procedural ECG was normal. And now also it continues to be normal. Uh, Srija? So, uh, uh, Shiva, I'm just going to ask Tin again. Uh, Tin, would you pull that middle, the waist in a little bit more? Yes, uh, I think you should receive the right side and uh, the half of the waist and bring the waist into the, uh, the defect. Well, on short axis on echo, you see the half device is uh, bulging, going and forth into the orsa, so that, that you cannot leave the device like this. Yeah. Hey, Shiva, a couple of things. I will recapture the right side. And you want to have a counterclockwise torque on the sheath when you pull them. 
pull the value of the device inside. If you don't pull the value of the device inside, it's not going to work. You have to have a counterclockwise stroke, and you cannot have it now when your write disk is deployed because it's, it's a very mobile. So you have to recapture it, even part of the belly, then have counterclockwise torque on the sheet. Otherwise, it's going to pull out like the last time. And then pull it inside, and then see if it works. Otherwise, this is absolutely no good device. Repeat another angiogram. Ready? Can you show the angiogram large, please? Angiogram large? Show that angiogram in full screen. Should we just show on echo now? Echo big? Show it on long axis. Now, uh, Shiva, I think the way still are uh, inside the LV. I think uh, you should remove the big tail first, and you you can do again. Downsizing of device might be helpful. Downsizing of device, it is not coming inside the VSD. It is just hanging in the ILV. That's another interesting question or comment. Downsizing the device would be better. Let's say 10 millimeters instead of 12. Mario, I, I, I expressed my concerns about the pulmonary artery pressure being high. It is a larger defect. It's not very small. Uh, Shiva, you don't have to speed up to make the decision, but we've got just two more minutes. Uh, uh, so you don't do anything uh, in a rush. Shiva, just take, one. Take a considered opinion. Oh yeah, go on, Mr. Go can ahead. Can you do? Can you do, please, an orthogram adjust with the big tail? Because we want to see the relationship of the device to the avatar. Uh, I will do that. Right now, I have again repositioned the device a little bit more. Uh, get the. We don't see the floor, or and neither the, now. Now, okay. Ready for injection? Uh, 15 at 15. Magnify this. One more mag. Show there. Okay, ready for injection? Okay, so do an autogram as Mansoor asked. The repeat, device repeat, and the waist, repeat. Uh, is in the LVOT, not in yeah. the VSD. Ready? So that's a not so acceptable uh, position to me. Yeah, so look at that. So how many would withdraw this device and abandon? Not abandon. Okay. All right. Uh, how many would downsize from this device to a smaller? Okay. So... Uh, Nobody, tell me, tell me not Shriya. many would, would downsize, and not too many would abandon, but certainly the current position is not satisfactory. Yeah, Aris? Don't rush. You have two more minutes. Get the, uh, like, uh, repeat another iortogram. Ready? Shoot. Yeah, and also show us the TOE long axial view. TOE long axial? Well, in this angiogram, in my opinion, you see definitely that the left disc is pushing against the aortic leaflet, yeah. deformating, deformating Freeze it. the leaflet. Freeze it. Okay, now show frame by frame. Make echo big.
Srija, rotate in such a way that the left ventricular outflow tract fully is seen. You are continuously showing the device. I want the left ventricular outflow tract without the device. Correct. Now, now you put the color. Okay. I'm trying to get it a little bit more inside. Oh, let's see the fluoro if you're doing that. Fluoro. Fluoro. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I I think the device is. Probably a bit too big. Either we have to downsize or abandon, I think. Well, that's the same appearance as before. Wire? Check it, uh, Srija, in... Uh, wash it in water and give me... No, you, you get the echo now. Echo big? Okay. Yeah, anyhow, aortic valve contact cannot be avoided because there is no aortic margin. So ma 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 the, the contact is not of concern. The concern is whether there is aortic regurgitation. Uh, the contact with the leaflet and movement of the device with the leaflet is expected in a patient where there is no aortic margin. Uh, Tin, what is, uh, what is your uh, thought about uh, see the 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 one the aortic pressure is about 110. The PA pressure is 60, and the VSD measures 8 to 9 millimeter. I have chosen a 10, I mean a 12, 10 MF4 device. Siva. Uh, yep. Uh, I think you choose the size of the device. I think it's okay, but the problem you should recapture the waves. Uh, we deploy the waves for make it alignment. But now it's alive already. Just recapture the way a little bit more. Recapture more, more, more. Yeah. And now you bring a little bit to the right side and deploy. Uh, there, are the left side is. Do an angiogram now. Yeah, no, it's the same. It's still the same. The left side is two. Yeah. Let. Uh, underneath and parallel with the the. the Aortic valve. Mm. Now it's the same. I think it got back in the same position as before. In, in spite of the fact that you pull properly into the defect, there is no way to implant this the device properly, in my opinion, Shiva. Yeah. So Shiva, we've got one minute now of negotiated. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so you're going to have to, well, if you think you can close it, we'll have to leave you and you let us know. Or if you think uh, you can follow what Tin is saying, which is bring the waist in a bit, then uh, Repeat another uh, you could try it. And Zaid wants to have the final word. Shiva, I just want to leave with one request. Yep. Leave the device only if you would leave this device if this patient was your son or daughter. Yeah. Otherwise, don't leave this device, if you don't mind. Yeah. As usual, typical uh, of Zaid, the... the you are like putting it's a lot of sentiments. It's rare to say anything yeah. sensible, but that was the most sensible thing you said. Okay, Shiva? Yep. Before we go, um, what are you thinking? Your final words on this one and the rest of the day? Uh, I, I act actually, I have another two more cases for the next ASD session. But, uh, but here, uh, there is... Uh, be, I'm not able to get it more into the left ventricular side. I'm going to try for another couple of uh, minutes, but if there is an aortic regurgitation, we are going to withdraw the device. Uh, the the uh, uh, 
maybe the the choice of the device also I am thinking. If suppose if I have a different type of device like a standard duct occluder, I probably will be able to drag it a little bit more inside. Tin, what is your thought about a typical duct occluder? Okay, Shiva. Uh, we've got a, uh, we're way behind. Thank you very much. I think we'll offer congratulations for your whole team. They've been absolutely brilliant. And you take your time in making the, deci the right decision for this. Okay. Bye-bye, Stephen. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much to all the audience. Thank well. you. Thank you very much.